Alright, so we got the uh, valve cover gasket and exhaust. Pretty much got the kit in, so finally came. Um, they did not have any rod bearings. They were completely out, so the kit, um, they gave me a, a refund on that, and I had to order the rod bearings from a different site, and um, they should be here in a couple days. So I'm going to start putting the pistons together and stuff, and uh, hopefully I can do it on my shop press, because uh, these are the press-in kind, and um, get all that done and see how far I get. Just gonna start putting the pistons together now. I gotta get the pins out of the the old ones first. Um, and then everybody says put these in the freezer. Um, I don't really know how much it's gonna shrink it, but we'll see, you know, that, that little bit of a little bit. So I'll just do it. Uh, I just came across several folks that said put them in the freezer. So we'll try it. Um, I'm gonna use the shop press to push them in. So hopefully that'll work. So um, got those. Just gonna get the old ones taken apart here in a second. I started the parts washer up. Got a video on how to make that real quick. Um, and I just got you know a mixture of paint thinner and then one bottle of this crud cutter parts water washer stuff. Um, it did evaporate some in my bucket, I guess, because I had a crack here. So I'll have to get a new bucket so that I can save the fluid. Um, I'm doing the timing cover. Got the seal out, and it was this was just caked with oil. Um, and then the pickup tube, um, I might just buy a new one, but um, I don't know if you can see that. Let me get the sunlight on it. Come over here, actually. There we go. Yeah, he's actually coming pretty clean. Um, if I think I have a video, I'll put it up next to this one, of what it was like beforehand. Um, I don't even know how any oil got through it. Uh, if that screen goes all the way across back in there, then... There, there's no way it could have picked up oil. It was it was bad. Um, after I get one more gallon, I'm going to get one more gallon since some of it evaporated. I, like I said, three gallons probably would have been perfect for this pump. Um, but I got a good flow now because I, I put that crud cutter stuff in there. So I got a pretty good flow. <clears throat> um, in a little while, I'm going to just go ahead and put this up here so that... I'm going to hook it up here so that it'll go in that tube and out um, like that. Uh, just get me something to probably a clamp or something put it on there so that the the fluid will flow through there and that'll help clean off that screen down there some but um get all that set up and i'm gonna work on the pistons right now and remember i said this isn't a how-to it's just a you can do it so just trying to get some of that scale off you can see that build up on there um just to make the plug go in easier and this is the uh bearing kit from Harbor Freight um, for we have that on hand and that fits right in there it'll at least get it started and then I can turn it over to get it flush so or you can go rent one of those tools use a socket whatever smaller one so it doesn't catch on those two side pieces. And I'm probably putting a socket on the top here to give me a little bit of room to hit would probably even be better. But. That feels pretty flush. So bearing kit seems to work. get the rest of those installed. All of those are in. Okay, starting to make some progress. I'm just getting ready to assemble now. I think I've got everything cleaned and all that kind of stuff. Got the core plugs in. Um, and now I'm just putting in the bearings so for the crankshaft. I'm 
I've got all the oil holes here lined up. And so, all right. It looks like it's right at that 0015, which I think it says 001. So I'm at 15, which is great. And um, so I'm right in between. Gonna go ahead and put it together. Okay, I got all my pistons back. Um, he only charged me 30 bucks to take the old pistons off and put the new ones on. So I figured that was a deal. And then trying to figure out and rig up some kind of press and then um, using a torch to heat them. He, you know, he had the rod heater and everything, so he probably did these in 15 or 20 minutes, especially as many as he's done in the past. So anyway, I just thought that would be easier for me. Um, 30 bucks to get the pistons uh, worked. Now, you know, if you had, the problem was is that these pistons have this little inset. So a socket that is big enough to rest against the piston but allow the pin to come out doesn't fit. Um, you just, basically you have to rig up something to kind of go in there in the, and hold the actual rod. And I didn't feel like messing with it. I needed them done, right? Um, so I didn't want to mess with our shop press and then I didn't want to mess with just a propane torch trying to heat this thing up and slide the pins in. I've never done it before so my luck I'd get it about a quarter in and then it would freeze up and I'd be stuck right and then have to press it out again go get another one anyway just a mess so something like that um, if you have the clip ones the um, semi floating or something like call them I don't know if you have the clip ones you probably could do those at home with no problem um, but these pressed ones Find a machine shop, go take it for 30 bucks. I did have to go do that and bite the bullet. Just just go have them do it. They know what they're doing. They've they've done enough that, I mean, yeah, there's lots of videos out there that show you how to do this and, and heat up the rod till it's almost blue. You know, you don't want to get it too hot and then slide your pin in and, you know, center it up and all of that. But look, just take your six pistons to them. He punched the old ones out, put the new ones in and charged me $30. You can't go wrong with that, and he knows what he's doing. So, um, problem is, is I still don't have my rod bearings. Uh, the company was out. I reordered them from that rockauto.com, um, and I'm just waiting on those to come in. So, I've done pretty much what I can tonight. Um, I've got, you know, the crank installed, all the plugs installed, and I think the next step, I'm going to read the, I'm going to go read the chapters and make sure, but I'm pretty sure that the pistons are next. And um, we'll go from there. So I'll be back after my parts come in. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Like, subscribe, comment, and just goes to show you, just set your mind to it, and you can do it. But also, know when to say when. You know, there's that pride of doing it yourself, but also sometimes you just want to, to make sure it's done. Anyway, all right, well, um, that's the uh, next part. Hopefully the next one will be the last video. I'm just going to... Put it together. Um, I probably will just, you know, do the last end part of it, and then, um, you know, this will be after the install. I'll come back to show you that it works, right? Or show you that it doesn't work, and then, you know, go take it to a shop, like all the comments will say. Um, anyway, that'll be the last video. This will just be the the final part here. The rest of it is just going to be putting it back together, and all I'm going to do is just follow the chapters over there on the on the screen and do what it says. So, um, got the crank in there, got it all torqued down. You know, just the, the standard stuff. So, um, anyway, well, thanks for watching. Like I said already, you know, we'll catch you in the next video.